Whoa. In New York City, food waste comprises roughly 30% of the waste stream. A handful of New York restaurants have tasked themselves with rethinking waste. One of these restaurants is Olmsted. I'm off to Brooklyn today to meet the chef and owner of Olmsted, Greg Backstrom. He's gonna teach me how to incorporate what would easily be considered garbage into a three course meal. Let's go. We're gonna be making a fun three course menu, incorporating some items that would be food waste and turning them into delicious meals. Correct. First, we're going to kind of do like a typical kale salad. Start picking the kale. So tell me about the creation of Olmsted. You've worked at a ton of amazing restaurants. What has all of that taught you? I didn't necessarily want to be cooking that food anymore. We try to be playful and fun and do things that people haven't maybe seen before, but we try to do it with combinations of flavors that everyone already knows in a sustainable way. Here we have the big living wall that has wheatgrass growing on it for wheatgrass shots. We yeah. have birds and we have fish. Here, you want another knife? Chef knife. Roughly chopped. Yeah, season it with some olive oil, some salt, a bunch of pepper zest the lemon and then we'll juice the lemon and then we're just gonna like massage it in so that'll make what is normally a tough green not as tough these are the stems from the last time we picked kale we chop it up and we mix it with a little bit of garlic and onion put three percent salt water over it which also has acid in it that will help sort of tenderize the, the, the kale greens. yeah massage and put the lemon in just start squeezing and i'll massage it for you cool let's talk about how you deal with waste here at Olmsted. we're a, a very seasonal restaurant the menu changes a lot we're based with new food waste every time. We have to be creative on the spot. It's an ever-growing process of like self-correct and evolve. So like when we clean the tub, we drain the tub, we spray that water over the garden. Oh, every time we clean great. the tub, try to reuse our gray water and everything. This is like a very simple salad. It has all the crunch from the kale and the stems. Cover the crap out of it with a lot of Parmesan. The best part. We make a lot of brioche here. We save all of the end pieces. And then it just blitz it in a blender? We, we, yeah, we blitz it in a food processor and we turn that into breadcrumbs. That's it. And there's zero waste. I'm excited. It's just really good. I really want to make this stuff. It's shockingly easy. I'm excited for round two, which is uh, the falafel. Carrots. Yeah. Carrot pulp that's been dried out, red lentils, parsley and mint, onions, garlic, cumin, and madras curry powder, wheat bran, and baking soda. Mix it all, and then we're gonna run it through the meat grinder. Super simple. That's nice. No cutting. Can I do it in a food processor? Yeah, you definitely can. The wheat bran and the baking soda kind of aerate it, so it's not so dense. It smells so good. Great. Go like that, that goes like that. Whoa! I'm so excited for this one. Ice cream scooper. Any size that you prefer. It takes a little bit longer to fry than you think. It takes four or five minutes. Obviously, you're in New York space is limited. Yeah. A lot of people would probably nix having that. You have a huge space and half of it is dedicated to your garden. Yeah. Why was that important? We're in the era where it's more about providing nice things for our guests. Like I'm not the guy that is the first person at the farmer's market to get all the things that no one else has. Like we like to use tomatoes and asparagus and present it in a way that maybe is unfamiliar, but it's still delicious. We try to accommodate as many allergies as we can. We try to support as many small businesses, small farms as we can. That was a good salt shot. Take our pea shoots, hit this with a lemon dressing that we make. These are grown out outside in the greenhouse right now. We make our own ranch dressing. Anything that's got yogurt in it is what I would go with. Yum! Dish two, done. Order up. Mmm, so good. Ranch dressing doesn't hurt. Ranch is my favorite dressing. Mmm. Should we make the squash bread? Yeah. Mmm, so good. For the last course, we have a squash bread. We serve it with a clotted cream and a jam. Right now, it's a Harbison clotted cream. It's wrapped in spruce and it has a rind and everything. So when we have leftover, you just pour cream over it. Normally, clotted cream is just cream that's put into a low oven overnight, and then there's a separation. Some of the cream caramelizes. You let that chill and you scoop it out, and it's super good. We take the spruce, the wood that's wrapped around it, but the, the rind and everything else just gets blended together. This is the untraditional way of doing it. That way we have a total yielded product, so that way there's no waste. And then we whip it almost like whipped cream. This is the spruce right here. This is the branch. That's the wheels. This is the product after you've put in this your mixture. 12 hours later, 12 yeah. 12 hours in the oven at 180. 180. We add 1% salt for flavor and to preserve it. And then once it's actually cold, we just we blend it in the mixer. That's what we're gonna do next. This part is just up to whatever your preference is. Like, we just whip it until just right around whipped cream. Once we have this, 
we really just simply serve it. Right now it's butternut squash. We do it with summer squash. We do it with honey nut. We sort of any dense squash. Dollop of the clotted cream. This jam, so we have a couple of rules that we follow. Everything is made within every three days, but just because we have that rule doesn't mean we should start throwing everything away. So after service, if it's two days old, the, any bar juices get, get frozen. We save the husks. We blanch them five times in cold water and then we take that juice that's in the freezer, the lemon and lime juice, orange juice, whatever it is, we mix that with the, the rinds that we run through the meat grinder, cover it with some sugar, and we cook it for a couple of hours, and it turns it into, honestly, it almost tastes like Sprite. This would go in the trash normally, but it's nice and bright. Look at that. Spread it however you want. Does it not mm. taste kind of like Sprite a little bit? It does taste just like, <laughs> mm, I thought you mentioned it. The cream does have a lot of flavor though. Jam mm. changes all the time. When we don't have this one, we like right now it would be strawberry rhubarb because it's spring. Yum. To cap it off, why do you think it's important for people to be rethinking their food and their ways, kind of reimagining what that is? It's important just for the obvious reason in that there's no reason to just throw something that's completely edible away, but to sort of highlight that in the menu so we do that for the dinner menu the brunch menu and across the street just to show that it doesn't have to be anything lesser just because it was an ingredient that you originally didn't think to use thank you so much for showing me all this i feel like i can do this thanks for coming thanks so much for watching guys click here to subscribe to our 29 and click here to watch another video see you next time